So the year was uh, 2000, and uh, I was getting ready to go to the top uh, pilot training uh, program in the world, and uh, I was getting my private license, and I kept crashing. Well, not crashing, but I would just boom on the landing, just smash every time, every time. And it was so disheartening, and we couldn't figure out what was going on. Found out I couldn't see the horizon. Uh, instructor pilot brought out a pillow, and then all of a sudden I was landing like butter. Okay, <laughs> I'm short, I get that. Um, that's a disclaimer. Uh, this is now my fifth year teaching. Uh, I, I don't think uh, I, I can see over the horizon yet. I'm still trying to figure out what education really is, but I've got some pearls of wisdom that um, hopefully have some merit for some of you out there. Um, so this was me. Uh, I got here because I was told that I was good at science and good at math, and the Air Force said they'd give me a full ride if I did engineering, and so I did, and, and I, I really didn't like flying. I didn't at all, and so I, I quit. Uh, I then worked as an engineer for eight years, and, and I was in Uzbekistan for the Air Force, and I, I didn't like engineering. But now I teach engineering, that's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> after some discussions with my wife, we decided, like, what do I really like doing? I like working with people. And so I went back to school, and I, I got my CAID endorsement, did some informal ed, did fourth grade, and uh, fourth grade was tough. Um, I now teach high school and uh, engineering and design, and I, I think fundamentally this, this little phrase here helps students find their own sense of purpose. I think that's why I show up every morning. I wish I'd had a high school experience that ha had maybe given me a sense of purpose. Um, these four bullets here uh, come from High Tech High, and it's kind of the design principles for their school. I love them because I, I think they give context for what I'm trying to do. Uh, I, I'm basically trying to create a system where students are running the classroom and students are discovering who they are. Um, first example I want to give is uh, my whole class is based on partnerships and probably the strongest partnership I have is with the school district and that's kind of weird to say because I'm part of it. But uh, there's so many opportunities that I, I think we miss uh, in the classroom and the disconnection between the, the, the school district. This was a beautiful example of when I was moving from one school to another. Um, they actually offered to bring an architect on board and work with my students to design the classroom that I was moving into. And so now I have this beautiful space and, 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 and it's just, you know, I can always talk about that, but I think in the grand scheme of things, it, that, I don't really care about this space. What I really care about was that experience the students had working on a real project that they kind of owned and worked with real um, architects and presented in front of um, the, the administration. Um, but even that, I think, doesn't quite sum up exactly where I'm trying to go in the classroom. Um, this picture right here is uh, from this past summer. Uh, two of those students that were from you know a few years ago, uh, along with a couple students from this past year, we all went and worked at the architectural firm, and then we ended up uh, working on the the STEM space for the Mount Sai remodel. Um, and to me, like I guess. My, my commitment to the classroom does not end at the end of the school year, nor does it end um, when they graduate. Um, and I think it's because of this right here, uh, these Skittles, these 12th man Skittles. We, I sometimes have kids walk in and, and uh, I'll have a student say, hey, can we, can we laser cut a Skittle? You know, this was like, uh, you know, this is like when the Seahawks were winning. And I was like, I don't know. And so um, I think I had two options at that point. I either could just continue on with my beautifully fleshed out lesson plan, or I could say, let's find out. And we found out, and then all of a sudden, we were in this like mad rush, uh, sending stuff up on, on Twitter and, and CAD, and, and all of a sudden, I found myself doing all of, hitting off all of my checkpoints for design and engineering, and it was nothing to do with the lesson plan. And so I really value my students as, as partners. Um, just along with the school district and the industry partners. Um, I'm already behind one slide. It doesn't always work. Uh, I bring this as exhibit A. Uh, this is a $200 compressor that was supposed to go into a, uh, a mobile vaccine storage backpack for uh, in developing countries, and here it sits still two years later. Um, the, the challenge with letting students run the show is it doesn't always work out, but uh, I'm okay with that because I think that is part of the STEM experience is understanding how failure works and how to respond to that.
Uh, this picture here that just went, uh, thank you, look at that, Psh, time. This guy, this guy, okay, are, are we just hacking it all now? Great. Uh, this guy is um, operating in a lean modality, uh, lean project management. He is uh, definitely working alongside his students, and, uh, and they are learning project management, social skills, critical thinking, problem solving. He's not a STEM teacher. Uh, I, I, I don't even live in the science building, I live in the art building. This is our, our yearbook teacher, uh, Mills. And uh, I think really hard about the fact that uh, we have all of these folks out there around the schools uh, doing some really interesting stuff that, that leads directly to uh, people being able to head out into STEM, but I don't think the budgets uh, funnel correctly, and, uh, and I don't think we have a, a common language to, to understand that we are doing uh, similar things. And so with that being said, uh, that's 20 seconds there, uh, I have these four things. Uh, I looked at who was signed up, and it's mostly administration here. These are, I guess this is my wish list for Christmas, is uh, in order for me to do a, a better job at letting students own the classroom and bringing industry in, um, I would love to see um, more internships and job shadows for students. It was really hard for me to get those, to find somewhere that was willing for me to take students out and work for the summer. We all got paid, and my hat's off huge to, to NAC Architecture for allowing us to, to do that. Um, it was only possible because it was a sustainable partnership with them. Um, we have an active relationship that is mutually beneficial. I have other partnerships where it's just kind of my buddy, and, and, and that's a lot of work for me. So my other wish would be for administration to um, kind of figure out how do we do sustainable partnerships with industry. Um, the last two there, immersive uh, PD. I think most of what I've learned is from uh, stepping away from the classroom and getting back into the design and engineering world. And I'd like to think long and hard about how are we training science and math teachers to do next-gen science standards and do design. Um, perfect example here is uh, my, my next landing pad is, uh, just as you mentioned, COP21. Um, my textbook right now is Twitter and NPR. Um, I have no idea how we're going to land it, where it's going to go, but it is so real for the students, and it is not in any textbook out there. I am letting them run with it, and, uh, and I have no idea where it goes, and, and that is my happy place, I think, and, and it took a while for me to get there. So with that being said, uh, yeah, th thank you for your time. <laughs>